They are the stars of YouTube. It might look like teenage hysteria. There's no question they are mega stars, but probably only. The UK is at the forefront of this trend, producing huge global stars many celebrities would envy. I don't think of myself as famous. I just have a lot of people who know who I am. I don't know, the word famous just sounds really weird to me because I'm just me. I'm not, I was gonna say I'm not really that interesting but then I was gonna say well six million people probably think I am, <laughs> so I don't know. She's lovely. And just, I know, she's so like amazing. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I like to talk about beauty and makeup and skincare. Enjoy the video. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> she's not like, oh yeah, they're just my fans. They're like her friends. Hello, how are you? I'm just like dying right now, like, because I actually made eye contact with her. It sounds really sad, but like she's my favorite person ever. <laughs> I get asked a lot, how has YouTube changed your life? I don't know. YouTube is my life. I grew up with YouTube and it grew up with me. Hey you, my name is Thomas Tom Scott Ridgewalk. I'm a huge fan. Big fan of Tom Scott, yeah. I love the cartoons. He's doing something stupid again, isn't he? Yep. I love the sketches. I love everything. Literally everything he does is just awesome. Hi! No, I'm not one of the pretty ones. It's fine, calm down. I was never an overnight phenomenon or anything. I've been building what I have for years. We just got here. Um, oh, right, right. It's been really, really quite scary, actually. That was really. I mean, that was that was good. Like I like well that. well trained. Is that okay. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Let's come say hello. We're identical twins, but also you in, you find me hilarious. That's no. also creepy. Yeah, it's, it's true. I'm not it, I can make you laugh whenever I want to. No, you can't. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Nikki. And I'm Sammy. There, Nikki and Sammy, cut your hair. Okay. It's gonna go so badly. I've yeah. got a lot of it though. It's not like you haven't because yours is deceivingly thin. What? It's too much. It's yeah. too much. <gasps> They're really funny. And they're cute. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. This is such a new thing for us. And we were signing things. I signed someone's phone and I signed, I signed someone's skateboard. Yeah, that's insane. And that, that just shows that what sort of impact that vloggers can have. We are at Summer in the City, which is a crazy event, basically bringing creators together with their fans. I think the majority will have come to see in flesh the people they watch every day on YouTube. <laughs> a YouTube creator is someone who puts content on YouTube, whose primary job is YouTubing, putting stuff on YouTube, making videos for YouTube, making a living off YouTube. I think I might have said YouTube a few times there. Aww. On YouTube, you can just create what you want, do what you want, be how you want. I see it as people's individual creative outlets. There are so many different types of YouTube channels. It's a person who plays video games, it's a person who bakes cakes, it's a person who talks about their feelings, it's a person who makes comedy videos, who makes cartoons. It's everything. Anyone can do it. You can film, edit a video and have it uploaded within an hour. And I think that changes the nature of the medium. What's great about YouTube is it's punk. No one's telling us what we can and can't do. There's no boss man telling you what the kids are into these days. You decide what to show people and people will judge for themselves. I'm currently being filmed. <laughs> this is the camera. <laughs> and here's the big what are these called again? Boom mic. Boom mic. The things I really don't use when I'm filming. <laughs> and Fran is almost done. Yay! 
my main channel, it's mostly the fashion and beauty. Now I'm going in with a little bit of bronzer. Basically, this is just perfect eyebrows made easy. So, so good. When I started, I had absolutely no idea where it was gonna go at all. I just thought it looked like such a fun thing to do. I worked in interior design when I was 18, but I didn't really enjoy it very much. So I was looking for somewhere else to kind of put my creativity. How cool is that? Very cool. I was watching other YouTubers doing beauty videos and talking about things they bought, but I was definitely way too shy to ever consider putting myself online. And I think one day I just decided, just try it. And I remember um, like uploading it and being like, oh, I'm, I'm not sure about this. Hi everyone, I was wondering what makeup type video to start with. I started off making things that I just really enjoyed watching, showing things that I'd bought and talking about my favourite lipsticks. Very well loved, I think you'll agree. I'm kind of a bit sad that it's running out. I think some of my first videos may have only had a maximum of about 6,000 views. Hang on. But even then I was just like, a thousand have watched this that's insane I was like dad there's a thousand people that have watched my video and he's like get off your computer and get outside and get a proper job um, and now my dad is like I'm so glad you didn't listen to me the best British vlogger is Zoe! the success of the channel was gradual to start with but when I got a million subscribers I feel like it kind of snowballed from there because I think a lot more people show interest they're like who's this they've got a million subscribers, maybe I'll like their channel. What's happened, Zoe? I've hit five million subscribers! Five million! Yeah! Yay! You do know the population of New Zealand is four million. I'm pretty sure. So you've got more people subscribed to you than Why live in New Zealand. Watch me! I don't understand! It's crazy! It's honestly crazy, isn't it? Five million. This is like a genuine reaction too, I literally just found out. I've never done a reaction to video. <laughs> oh, wow. Five million. Even now, I don't really think about the number of people that watch. I still don't comprehend that in my mind. Like people are like, oh, you hit six million. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> Am I? That's crazy. So this must be an amazing day for you. Yeah, I think as long as you're having fun, the people that watch you will have fun as well. What chaos? Ah. I mean, I'm on YouTube because I don't know how to interact in the real world, so... Uh... When I was younger, the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They, I, you know, they played with attention deficit disorder, Asperger's, autism. It was just weird, just a weird kid. Then they actually sent me off for an IQ test and the results were off the charts or whatever. And they were like, oh, okay, this kid's a genius. But most of my desire to entertain people came from, you know, just not being very popular. I couldn't just get away with being a good looking guy. It was more of a, I need to make people like me. What do I have? Okay, I can be funny, that will work. Hey you, my name is Thomas Tom Scott Ridgewell and I've been making videos on the internet for over 12 years. Oh, that's a really long time. I got started making stuff online long before YouTube. I was about 10, 11 years old and I found this cartoon that was just not very well made, but for some reason I was just amazed by it because I watched it on a computer and it was like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I didn't know what that meant, but I didn't want to make things for TV. I didn't want to make things for cinema, I wanted to make things on the internet. And within a couple of years I was making my first cartoons and live action videos. A lot of them were just terrible and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I'm using the internet! But then very quickly after that I started trying to make comedy sketches and parodying my favourite films. And when YouTube came around I just jumped straight onto that and it was pretty wicked. <laughs> It used to just be me and a camera in my bedroom and now it's a huge scale thing where I've got equipment and crew and location and then I work with a team of people to compose music and do sound design and visual effects and editing and then it gets sent out and millions of people see it. I was one of the first people to get a million subscribers which was quite exciting. At the moment I have three million subscribers which is again an unfathomable number. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. There's no unawkward way to like just kind of instigate a meet and greet thing. 
do mingle, make friends. You've all got one thing in common. It's bad taste. <laughs> so... Maybe it sounds a little narcissistic, but coming from personal experience at, with them, my fans are just me. They're all just, you know, these little geeky, nerdy kids who like pie and explosions and the way they act and the way they talk just reminds me so much of me at different ages of my life, which is mind blowing because I never met these kids when I was younger. Where were you when I needed you? Relatable people. But before you can even begin making, but before you can even begin, I've never had a real job. I've been making a living off YouTube since I was about 19. So I've been making a living off YouTube for about five years, mostly through brand deals and adverts. But because YouTube is so much bigger now, it becomes harder to get numbers. I may have 3 million subscribers, but the more popular other YouTubers are, the more likely they'll crowd up the most watched page, meaning that you won't get onto it. So I feel a pressure to stay on my game with YouTube. I worked hard for what I have. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to lose it. So I'm always trying to evolve. And we do. We've been doing videos for one year and I think it's four months. We didn't expect to get where we are today. All the people that have chosen to press subscribe on our, channel. on our channel, of all the ones that are out there, they chose ours, and that's really... Which is amazing. We started watching YouTube around six years ago. It looked like so much fun and something I, I don't know, not in an arrogant way, but I just thought, oh, I could do that. And so we, we did. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sammy. And I'm Nikki. And one of the videos we did first, our tin can challenge. We did the first, I heave at every time I watch. Don't think about it. Hold your nose, shut your eyes and put it in your mouth. The tin can challenge is where you have, it's almost like Russian roulette. And there's a selection of cans in front of you, ranging from baked beans to dog food. Oh! Our draw as creators, I think, is we are unintentionally funny. Do a remake of Single Ladies. Okay, okay, here we go. Our YouTube persona is an accurate representation of the best form of ourselves. <laughs> we are ourselves in front of the camera for the, the time we film it. Get your, get your, get your head in the game. Is that it? I can't remember. But we only take the funny parts. We so condense it down into yeah. four minutes, so it's the hyper real version. Which I think would happen to if we sat anyone behind the camera, filmed them for 20 minutes, and then just cut to the good bits. I think that makes them seem like a more interesting person than they are when you meet them. We live at home with our parents and our brother and sister, two dogs, three cats. Three cats. That's that it. sounds really sad, doesn't it? <laughs> our parents at the moment support us, but our goal would be to be able to support ourselves with what we do on YouTube. What's the video that's going up tonight? Racially diverse group travel to Volcano to destroy old man's ring. I do wonder about YouTube <laughs> It's taken them a long time to understand what it is we do and how many people are actually engaging with us. I think for them, because anything online is a new media, so to them it's not got real world impact. All they see is us sitting in our rooms, we film in one, we edit in the others, and we're not going out doing anything. So it's like, oh, Nikki, Sammy, do you want to take dogs out now? You're not doing anything. So, no, I'm busy. I'm right. replying to every single comment on our last video yeah. and the video before that, and it's going to take a few hours. But then we still have to walk the dog and uh, do the dishwasher. Good girl, L. L, L, L. I generally try and upload one main video a week. Hello, everybody. I am going to be doing my June favourites video today. I don't know why my arms have just lost control of themselves. Woo! I film on my own. I don't really know how to work a camera properly, if I'm honest. I find focusing very difficult. I use my hand. I am good. Oh, I just inhaled my own hair. Sometimes I've been out of focus, or I've had lipstick on my teeth, or I've had a bit of fluff in my hair, but that's just the whole point. I'm not an expert, so I just go with it. <laughs> no. There's the community of YouTubers, and we all make videos together. Collaborations are like one of my favourite videos to film. <laughs> okay, perfect. Pretty much everyone in my life I have met through, not everyone in my life, but everyone recently who I'm surrounded with are people that I have met online. Alfie! <sighs> That's basically how I met Alfie. Intro, intro. Mm -mm. Oh, punch right up in the face. <laughs> Hello, everybody.
everybody, today I'm here with Alfie. Alfie's also a vlogger and his channel is huge. So if you didn't already know, I've been on YouTube for nearly four years now. We started going to events together and instantly got things in common. So they just kind of progressed on from that. It is online. Um, at first we weren't too sure because obviously having a relationship in real life is new and exciting anyway. He seems annoyed with her. <laughs> 24 thumbs up. Let alone when you've got people that want to watch your life, let alone when they want to watch yours and his life. It's kind of like a mixture of the two and it's like, oh, how's this gonna go? Good night. Good night, guys. Right, this was from yesterday. Oh, my goodness. This is fan mail that gets sent to my PO box. Dear Zoe, I love you. I have watched every one of your videos. When I grow up, I want to be just like you, an amazing ombre-haired fashionable girl with a cool mini. This is so cute. I love that people spend so much time. My audience is probably 90% female. I guess a lot of people see me as a big sister or, you know, a friend, but I think a lot of them think my life is perfect because it looks amazing and you just get to do everything and you never have to worry. It's like, actually, sometimes, I do worry because I'm still just Zoe that started videos for fun. What a lot of you may not know is that I have suffered with anxiety and panic attacks really, really badly since I was 14. Public speaking and going to events and live TV is all affected. But because I had to do them, it kind of made it less of a thing in the end. And I think my confidence has grown massively so I just think, right, if you have a panic attack, then so what? Just keep, carry on. Uh, hold on, hold, hold on me, hold on me. Okay. You say, like, I'm on the floor. Pull myself up with it. Bonk. Bonk. No, never. I have three channels on YouTube. I have Tomscar, which has three million subscribers, which is my main channel where I put comedy videos and action videos and whatever I'm really proud of. I have my second channel called Dark Squidge, where I put my more personal content. And then I have Ed's World, which is a channel full of cartoons, which I actually inherited from my friend who passed away from cancer, but that was our show that we made together. The response to Ed's passing, I'd say, was the most life-changing thing for me in terms of my relationship with YouTube and, and how I viewed YouTube, because you know when he went, without any provocation, Hundreds of people uploaded videos talking about, you know, what he meant to them. He was a huge inspiration for me, my favorite animator of all time. Like when I feel down, I'd watch one of his videos and I'd laugh and I'd feel better. When Ed died and I saw the response people had to him, it became so apparent that he left behind a legacy, you know, that he had affected people. And I realized that if I were to go, I don't think I had. And it was sort of at that point that I, I realized I wanted to, I, I wanted to, you know, do good by the world and and make a difference. And, and, and so I started kind of like, you know, that's when I started pouring my heart out and hoping that it would matter to people. Hello, Turbo fans. I thought I'd slow things down a little bit today and have you get to know me a bit better. So far, the things that I've really dived headfirst into are quite, you know, pubescent teenage insecurity based issues. I make the videos that I really could have done with seeing at different points in my life. So in the interest of making your life a little less awkward, welcome to the sex talk. I'll talk about anything. I talk about my experiences and, and, and thoughts about bullying, maybe weight gain. Someone out there is going to be positively affected by that. And if it just affects one person, that's worth it. But it doesn't affect one person, it affects hundreds if not thousands. Hey you, so I don't really know how to talk about what I'm about to talk about, so I apologize if this video is just gonna be a big old ramble, but whatever, let's do it. Recently, I made a video uh, talking about how I was diagnosed with and trying to deal with depression. I mean, I just have no interests, no passions, no hobbies, no goals. I mean, fuck, I don't, I, I, I lost interest in playing video games. And for me, that's when I know something is wrong. I really had to, dig deep and suck it up and decide that I needed to go to a doctor. And my friends have been telling me to do this for ages, but it was just kind of like, I'll get around to it, but I did it. Honestly, I didn't think that it was gonna do anything. I kind of made it more for myself because I just wanted to talk about it. I wanted to get it out there. But, I, but because I just said, 
I have taken steps to deal with my depression, thousands of people did the same. And that's incredible. Like, I, I, I'm so happy about that. I mean, I'm not because I'm depressed, but theoretically, I'm so happy about that. But no, it's, it's incredible that like so many people were affected by that. Like I thought that I'd have to make a video saying, I had depression and then I beat it, yeah. And people would be like, oh cool. But no, just being honest and saying, here's the thing that I'm going through. That was enough. Okay, I'm gonna go back to making videos now. Tom Scott out. Wait, so well, this what, one needs to go up soon because there's momentum. But what do we have in terms of videos this week? We have this movie one. I can go up tomorrow because it'll be quick. And then for Friday, we've got the American Candy. We get a video filmed and edited in about four or five hours. Yeah, we sit there and we'll look at what's like trending. So it gives us like a spark and then we'll go from there. Some YouTubers like to eat American candy and react to it on camera and we love candy. So we're going to do that for you today. We do get a lot of ideas from subscribers. It might not be something we want to do or we're putting it off. But then enough people say prank calls. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> We try hard, we work hard. We upload every day. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. But there are days where it's a real push to put a video out and we're not gonna miss the upload. Google algorithm favors regular, frequent uploads. So if you're uploading frequently and regularly, then you're, you're being pushed up in the search rankings. And then you can go onto analytics and look at your graphs and your trends. You're like, oh, what's my growth? Everyone would like a million subscribers. It's just getting there. Obviously. It does help you get taken seriously. Companies are obviously interested in having numbers you have if they're looking to brand deal. That's a lot of ways. That is the way YouTubers make money through brand deals. Hello everyone. As you know, I have been on holiday. So I just thought I would share with you some of the things that I took away with me. I do do sponsorship with brands, but I would say I probably turned down 90% because I've built up this audience of people that trust my opinion. You know, is that mascara really good or have you been paid to say that? I'm super excited to be here on The Very Channel today. And I will only want to talk about something that I 100% genuinely would actually talk about. Stick around for lots more tips on how to get healthy, glowing, natural skin. The YouTubers who are celebrities, who are absolutely adored and obsessed over, they can say, this is the lipstick I use. And every one of their admirers will go buy that and brands know this. Those people make a lot more money than me. <laughs> so when I post a video, I usually tweet it, and then I'll post it, and then I'll just start getting comments. Social media kind of blows up a little bit for a while, and then it kind of settles a bit. <laughs> the thing about comments is, you've probably got 10,000 comments on your video, and you're scrolling through, and you're like, oh, these are so lovely, oh, these are so lovely. There'll be one that sticks out like a sore thumb that's like, I hate this video, unsubscribing. And then all day, that's the only comment that you can think of just printed in your mind. I think that's just the way the human mind works. And I think if anyone can ever not be like that, they're very fortunate. <laughs> Going out shopping isn't really an anonymous thing anymore. So sorry. That's okay. Oh my god, I'm sure. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> the relationship between YouTubers and viewers is changing and how much more excited people are becoming and how there's like this celebrity culture around it. Nice to meet you guys. It is really bizarre because you know they know everything about me, they know where I've been, what I've been up to, they know what I had for dinner last night, and I don't know anything about them. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Sometimes I feel like it would be nice to have a bit more privacy. I do have some viewers that know where I live um, and stand outside. Every time I walk past, I'll see a little glimpse and I'll just be like, <laughs> hello. I've had notes left in my windscreen wipers and notes posted through the letterbox. I mean, I know they have the best intentions at heart, but it, that, that can be quite scary. Um, so you can click the link in the description box. Doing this is fun and it is amazing, but sometimes it is a lot and it's not something that I was ever prepared for. Sometimes um, this all just gets too much and I don't know if other YouTubers feel like this. <sighs> I, I, I just, I put a lot of pressure on myself and I take all your comments into consideration and I just want to make everyone happy, which I know in reality is impossible. I made a video after I just had a really weird day where everything just got to me. I filmed it and then 
I was like, oh no, I can't upload that. When to delete it? And I was talking to the friend at the time and she said, why won't you upload that? And I said, I don't know. I just feel like that's not something that I'm sure I want to share with people because that is me at my most vulnerable. She was like, but people have to know that that is you and that is what happened on that day. Most of the response to that video was just, we totally understand. It did reassure me that I could be more open. I am just trying to get my head around the whole thing. If there was like a guidebook, like how to be a YouTube celebrity, it would be a lot easier, but obviously there's nothing like that. You just kind of have to learn as you go. So today I am allowed to do something very exciting. Ta -da! There it is. First novel by Zoella. There's definitely a lot more opportunities. Like I would never imagine that I would have written a book or that I would be bringing out a range of beauty products in a million years exciting and nerve-wracking at the same time but exciting but really exciting mm -hmm. I don't know maybe it comes from some sort of inherent human fear of becoming irrelevant but I do just want to pour out my whole soul and my whole existence online and it means that the relationship I have with my audience is very brutal and honest and I you know I like that but it's really hard to, you know, to try and live up to that standard all the time. It's like when my friend passed away from cancer, I didn't really know what to say online. And what I ended up doing is, is I took sort of the speech that I said at the funeral and recorded it for YouTube. But what messes me up is that I did it three times. The first time I did it, I didn't cry. Didn't want to cry, but I was like, People won't respond to that well. People will think that I'm too cold. So the second time I did it, I let myself cry. But then I, I just like, I cry a bit too early in the video. It seems a bit weepy. So the third time I record it, I shed one tear at quite a emotive point. And it's like, that's the one. That's the one I'll upload. No, I... I want to be real and I want to be honest, but I'm just so aware of everything, of my own facial tics, of, of how people will respond to things, that I just can't truly be raw. For me to be real, I'd have to not know I was being filmed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even now I'm emoting and I'm, I'm, I'm flailing my arms about and I'm, I'm being very yeah, eloquent, but you know, if I was really talking, I'd, you know, I'd probably be mumbling a lot more, but, and, and I'd, I'd, I'd be dropping my eyes a lot more, but then I wouldn't look excitable. I wouldn't be reflecting that I actually do enjoy my job. So I perform. My sister, who's 14 years old, is a very, very big fan of you, and she would like, like you to have you, this. I like how you <laughs> My relative success, while diminishing in terms of, in, in relation to the huge YouTubers out there, the huge upcoming YouTubers, I'm still making enough and I'm still, I still have a big enough audience to keep going. I want to leave the world knowing that I affected people's lives. I hope that some kid out there, when they grow up, they teach their kid right based on the things I've said. And that's my legacy. <laughs> Gorgeous. And then I also get to make people laugh with stupid dumb jokes about llamas and exploding bears. Time at six, six. Hello! My biggest challenge now, I guess, trying to stay on top of everything. You never know, this is the thing, it's all so new, you just don't know where it's going. The scale of YouTube is just gonna expand. It's gonna be even more insane. You're probably gonna see like the Harlem Shake, upside down, in anti-gravity, like anything you can imagine is gonna be on there. I love explosions, and YouTube is an explosion. It's just chaos. It's just constantly evolving and changing, and I'm excited to see where it goes next. One thing that's great about YouTube that isn't great about the rest of the media world is that with YouTube, I can choose the angle that the camera is at. I wouldn't have that camera there in a million years. Look at that. That's not okay. I want to control everything. I would have that camera. That camera would be higher up. Uh, I'd be a lot closer to it. And that would have a slimming effect. And definitely no side cameras. No side cameras. You people. 
Why do you hate me? I like YouTube. I'll stay there, thanks.